Hey guys, it's Rebecca Oberstadt. In today's video, I am working with palette number 16. Uh, I should have recorded this yesterday, but I got busy working uh, and editing and whatnot. And by 7.30, I was ready to pass out. I was so tired. So I didn't film anything yesterday at all, but I got like four videos edited, so I should get credit for that. Anyways, this is the Marrakesh palette from Nomad Cosmetics. This will be a two looks and a first impressions. I'm going to try and stick with the neutral shade only in these palettes. Um, and then at the end, I will walk you through like how to change it from a neutral shadow into like a pop effect. So um, if you want to see how I can take a palette that it looks like this from like a neutral like workday kind of look and then spice it up for like maybe drinks with friends after work. I don't drink. So it would never be me or, you know, maybe you're going out to dinner or you have, you know, you're meeting up with some friends and you just want to change the way your look looks, but you don't want to have to like redo all of your makeup. Then I will show you how to do that at the very end. So if you're interested in seeing what looks I create with this palette, keep watching. I'm going to only, I'm not going to talk through this part. I will talk through the part at the very end where I show you the pop effects and things that you can do to spice up a look. And um, so yeah, enjoy the music for now and I will see you guys at the end. Enjoy.
Okay, so here are the two finished, you know, basic everyday neutral eye looks. One of them is more like neutral, neutral. It's a warm neutral look. And the other one has a, it's a neutral look, but it's a burgundy, like kind of red neutral look. So now I'm going to take it from what this is, which both of these looks are perfectly work appropriate. If you work in an office building, um, if you want, you could throw on some black liner or some brown liner. I didn't throw on any liner. So I'm going to take the Marrakesh palette again and the air just came on. Sorry for the humming that the, that makes. I'm gonna show you some pop effects. So I'm going to take this yellow on a dry, you know, this 100% dry wet and wild brush. I'm going into the Argan Fruit, which is this yellow shade. I've seen a lot of people use yellows and reds together and I think it's so pretty. And I'm going to pop it right on the inner part of my eye. Now it's not as vibrant as I would like. You could get the brush wet and make it a little bit more vibrant. And I'm also going to take it and put it in the center of my lid. over shadows is because I have um, hooded eyes but my eyelid my mobile lid stops right here and if I don't press over it, it what it does is the shadow like seeps into the fold of my eyelid and it eats the eyeshadow so here we have the one modified eye look not too much different but different enough now with the other eye with it being mainly a warm neutral eye I'm going to go for this red shade this is cafe Arabe. I'm going to pop this under my lash line. And I'm going to put it right up here as well. You could use a different brush than the one that I'm using. I just didn't want to get another one dirty. And if you want this red more bold, get your brush wet. And I'll show you the difference in just a second. Okay, so here it is with the pop effect with a dry brush. I'm gonna use what's left on here, just a little bit more under my lash line, dry. Now, just getting regular tap water. I get the brush wet and then I have a washcloth in my lap and then I tap it usually on like the my wrist or the back of my hand so that it's damp but it's not like wet I don't want it like soaking wet I just want it damp I'm going back into that cafe or rebe shade and we're gonna go right back up above the lash line take that brush and go literally butt it up. I'm going to push my lashes up on the bottom and go right up against the lashes. I need the brush a little bit more damp. So much easier just to grab my little Luxie flat shader brush instead of using the brush that I was using. But again, I didn't want to dirty another brush. So let me show you this. It's a little bit more punchy now. And if you wanted to, if you do something like this, pair it with a, a bolder lip, with a brighter lip or take something that's red and pop it in the center of whatever you're currently wearing. I just kind of throw on the Ofra unzipped. Um, so technically I have showed you four looks with this palette. Now, initially I think I used eight shades out of here. Let's see. 
uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight shades. And then I just use this one, which makes nine, and this one, which makes 10. So I've got these down here. So basically the outer corner that I haven't used yet. You could have done this with one of these pop of teal colors, done the teal in your inner corner and then along your lower lash line to give a pop up a blue effect. effect. Um, with the burgundy, I could have used uh, this like orange shade underneath and then moved a little bit more into my crease. There's so many different color combinations that you can do to get different looks just by placement of shadows. That's why I like doing my series where it's um, two looks, same shades, and I use the exact same shades on each eye so that you can get a better understanding of uh, placement or just how different a look can be just by rearranging the shadows um, or applying one first and then another one se uh, second and then switching the order on the other eye it can change the entire look of your eye your face um, just your whole makeup look will change just based on eyeshadow placement um, I know I can do all of my face makeup and leave my eyes undone and then come in and film an eye look video and I look so funny without eye makeup on it it's not even funny and I don't wear foundation at all so I'm gonna zoom you guys in and show you both of these modified eye looks and I'm gonna try and do like a split screen where I show you like the other first two with these as well so you can see the difference So hopefully this is helpful for you guys to uh, see not only a first impression, um, I'll get into that in a second, but different applications, different uh, effects that you can get with eyeshadows. I didn't talk through the first part, it's basic eyeshadow application. You, This eye, I kind of use an up and down uh, motion as well as like the windshield wiper motion to get the colors on my brow bone to blend. One of my eye is um, deep set, whereas the other one is not because I've had a stroke. So um, one side of my face is completely different from the other. My eyes is a little bit different. Um, and so I've had to learn to work with that over the years uh, since my stroke and my heart attack. Um, and, and our face changes as we age as well. So I'm encroaching on 40. I will be 40 in September. So as my eyes change, um, sometimes they're more hooded. When I look forward, there's very little of my mobile lid that shows on either of my eyes. And it's always been that way. So it's not like a new thing. Uh, but it is something that now that I'm, you know, almost 40, it does change the way I apply eyeshadow a little bit. Um, find brushes that fit your eye shape and work with those. Don't always work with something that's this big when you need something that's smaller around in diameter. You can get smaller blending brushes uh, that work for your eye shape. You just kind of have to like hunt and peck for them and look for reviews or like look for brush videos. I've done those before as well. Um, the brush that I use mainly is this one from BH. It's a number two. It's a really strange tapered brush. So I could get color just on the tip and work with that. Or I could put color on like one of the sides. So it's down here all the way to the tip. So as I put it on, the tip applies a, the lightest amount of product, whereas further down on the brush, because it's tapered, applies a little bit more richer. Um, also, the angle of the brush you hold it, if you hold it like this versus like this, depends on where you're going to get shadow placement. So those are also things that you can take into consideration when applying eyeshadow so that um, it's more even or um, you can get different effects by holding it in different spots, holding it here, holding it here, or even holding it here, you're going to get different densities of color on the eye. Now, um, I have, this is, I think, the last of the four palettes from Nomad Cosmetics that I had to do first impressions on. I love these shadows. They blend super easily. You don't have to, like, think to use them. The color selections are really pretty. Like I, I said with this one, this is a neutral palette for the most part. It's a warm neutral palette. A lot of, these are all warm shades, and then, of course, you have an entire row of blue. Um, and of course, the color story on the palette is what I think when I think like Morocco or Marrakesh. Um, so this is this is very appropriate for the region in which this. 
the region in which this palette was designed for. So it makes a lot of sense to me. Um, I have a couple of friends that are from Morocco, so I know what it looks like over there. I have watched uh, a few movies that were based out of Morocco. Uh, there's uh, some awesome series on Netflix. If you have Netflix, they are in, of course, other languages. Um, some of them are in Arabic, some of them are in French, some of them are even in Spanish. Uh, if you can't understand those languages, just watch them with the English subs on. Um, there are some, there was like a spy uh, show that I watched, the series that I watched was amazing. Um, this this woman uh, basically was a clothing designer who worked her way up and then ended up fighting the Germans. So uh, it was really interesting. Um, plus looking at all the colors and the textures from the markets when she would go and pick fabric, um, the way that she designed clothes, the way that she designed her studio to have like the wallpaper and the furniture, the floors. This this is what you see when you go and see Morocco. Um, like hotels, the water features, the walls, the tiling done, it all looks very uh, artistic like this. And it's so beautiful and colorful and they have really rich tones and you're gonna find a lot of warm tones there anyways. But it's this palette is like a perfect color story for that region of the world. And so um, I, I appreciate the fact that not only does Felicia and her husband travel, they like to travel, but when she builds an eyeshadow palette, they think about their travels, they think about the colors, the textures, the themes in those countries when they're building the palettes. And I appreciate that. And um, somebody who has friends literally all over the world, it, it really makes me love the brand so much more just for the simple fact that they really get into the nitty gritty of what the culture or the region brings for a color story and they incorporate that into a palette. So um, I, I highly appreciate them. I appreciate the brand. Um, I love dealing with the owners. She is so amazing. And this is a beautiful palette if you like warm tone shades. And I've always said I don't like warm tone colors, but for whatever reason, I guess it's because I'm a warm undertone, warm eyeshadows always look super good on my skin. Cool tones make me look dead. I prefer cool tones. Me personally, I like the color story of cool tones, but when I wear them, I look dead. And that's probably because I am a warm undertone. I'm a yellow undertone. I have a lot of green and yellow in my skin and uh, warm tones just suit me even though I personally prefer cool tone shadows. So my body betrays me. My mind and my heart love one thing and my body completely betrays me. So uh, no complaints, just a little bit of fallout. None of these shades were uh, difficult to work with. Again, this formula is you've got some uh, metallics, you've got some shimmers, you've got satin shades, you've got mattes. They all blend super easily. You can mix and match the shades. You can use a matte and a metallic on the brush at the same time and apply it and it blends out with a fluffy brush. Works really well with a flat shader brush, um, a packing brush, whatever you need to use brush wise. You can use the shadows wet or dry. Even the matte shades work really well wet. So I haven't had any issues. Again, I just use tap water. I don't use, you know, fancy sprays or anything on my brushes because those burn my eyes. So I stick to water. Water works perfectly fine for me. Um, I've never had an issue. If I need a color underneath to be a little bit richer, you can use a little bit of concealer as a eyeshadow base or something like uh, the NYX Jumbo Eye Pencils. These work really well as, a, as an eye base as well. I found a few from Wet n Wild that work really well under shadows. I would not recommend them in your waterline because everyone I've tried in my waterline makes my eyes burn for hours. So I wouldn't recommend them in the waterline. The NYX ones you can use in the waterline and I don't have any issues. Me personally, I don't have issues. Um, so, and you can even use liquid lipsticks as a, an eyeshadow base, like the Jeffree Star liquid lipsticks. I've used those as an eyeshadow base before and put shadow over them once they dry down. Um, I have some Wet n Wild ones. The formulas are very comparable between the two. If you don't want to support one brand or you don't want to support the other, there's some options. And I find that they work really well underneath an eyeshadow and it, it gives uh, a richer look to the shadow. So hopefully this is helpful. I'm Rebecca Oberstadt. Again, this is palette 16, seven, uh, 17 and 18. I will probably wash this off in three or four hours when I have to go out to the post office and drop off some packages this afternoon. It is Sunday when I'm recording this um, and I have the Shane Dawson collection on the counter for next. And then after that, I've already pulled this one. This is that one I got from Walmart. Um, the purple shadow was broken. I have sanitized it and um, cleaned it up as best I could, but the darkest shade in here like was it broke in the corner. This is the Rosewater Bite Size Eyeshadow from e.l.f. This was like $3. Um, so this will be palette number 19 when I get to it. So hopefully you guys are enjoying this palette roundup. And um, I will see you guys in another video very soon. Have a fantastic day or night wherever you are and stay safe.